Hi guys, welcome back to another journaling process. So I decided that today I'm going to again do a, my process in real time. Um, the reason I want to do it in real time again is because I've actually had a request. Yay, I love getting video requests. It makes me think outside the box. So anyway, I had a request by someone who was wondering how to incorporate vintage ephemera into an art journal without making the entire spread vintage. So this is someone that really prefers a modern style of art journaling, bright colours, like a clean page, but also really likes the look of vintage ephemera. So her problem was that she didn't know how to mix the two together while keeping it like semi-modern with her um, backgrounds and her actual art journaling. She didn't know how to incorporate that ephemera. And her other problem was that she felt like some of the ephemera that she had was too precious. So she, it's kind of like a fear thing. So not knowing how to use ephemera in a way that doesn't alter it too much or take away the original charm of the ephemera. So first of all, I want to say that I personally don't use very much vintage ephemera in my art journal so far. The reason for that is for the same reason because I just think vintage ephemera is very precious and so I don't like to um, alter it too much. However, I do have some pieces that I have collected that I already had in my art journal box where I collect things to use and I'm happy to um, go ahead and try and show you a couple of different ways you can use it in a spread. So I'm not an art journaling expert so I have no idea really where I'm going to go with this. I'm just going to see what, what I can do. Let me show you the ephemera that I pulled. Okay so I've pulled out some different note paper. I've got a piece of like an old pattern instruction thing. I've got this little receipt, vintage receipt. These aren't vintage, but I thought that I would use those. They're little applique. They were like iron-on sewing things. Then I have a little vintage envelope, a vintage card. So this one is for like a congratulations for having a baby card. I also have this baby ephemera, which is like something that looks like it has come out of a magazine. So this is really cool. Anyway, I decided that for this page, because I don't know exactly where I'm going to go with it, I'm going to use concept to become comfortable and passionate about the page, if that makes sense. So for me, if, if a page has a meaning for me personally, I just find it a lot easier to get inspired and get excited and get ideas. If you have a, a concept that it that excites you or that inspires you then go ahead and use use that in your art journaling because it will help you um, pull ideas together so for me I'm going to in incorporate things that are baby themed of course and I'm going to do a spread um, about my kids somehow my youngest son turns one next month so that's crazy to me so I think I'm gonna just run with that concept and just do a page about how fast the time flies so anyway I'm going to use this vintage ephemera in different ways and hopefully I can give you some ideas on how to incorporate vintage ephemera into your art journaling to do this page I'm going to I know that I'm going to incorporate some pictures this is a, some older pictures of both of my kids when they were younger um, and I'm just going to work with those. I've also pulled out a sheet of scrapbook paper. I feel like this is a more modern like geometric print and that's going to help me keep the modern feel to the page. So I'm going to use, I'm going to keep the modern feel with use of colours and pen. Okay, okay, okay. So let's see. I'm just going to work with this page. Okay. So my first idea is using vintage ephemera on the background layer. So if you had like a vintage letter or um, anything, anything, I'm going to use this pattern, this old bit of pattern instructions and maybe some of this writing paper and just I'm going to use that as my first layer on the page. All I'm going to do is probably just maybe rip 
some of this and then just collage um, pieces of it all around the page however I feel like doing so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So I'm just using a glue stick for this because the paper's quite thin, it's going to hold it fine, I'm going to layer on top of it so it's going to, I think that's going to work just fine. I'm going to tear this as well and just maybe pop some here and there. art journaling um, it's kind of important not to overthink it too much so if we're even like this is my first layer so I'm not gonna put too much thought into how I'm placing things because it's gonna most of it's probably gonna get covered up but layering in art journals it really adds a, um, a really cool effect because all the different layers bring something to the page even if a lot of the it gets covered up it still adds something so that's all I'm doing here and I'm just gonna keep placing it so that is my first little layer and um, so you could do this with a vintage letter you could do it with ledger paper like I have you can do it with anything anything that you want to incorporate and yeah just have fun with it so that's what I've done now I think I might do stamping just to start to bring more layers on. So let me see what stamps I have. All right, so I just pulled a couple of different stamp sets that I have. These stamps are all by Kaiser Craft, in case you're wondering. So they're all just different baby stamps. And I'm just going to use some of them. I think I'm going to use the footprints and I don't know, maybe a couple of other ones. I'll just see how I go. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp that. I'm using stays on ink. to add colors so to keep this looking more modern because at the moment it's looking kind of pretty vintage I'm going to start adding some really bright fun colors to the page I'm thinking I might have a play with more distress stains I might use this watercolor palette I don't know yet so I'm gonna just I think I'm gonna add the distress stains first and see how I go Done the distress stains. I think I'm going to add a little bit more color with my watercolor palette. This is just a cheap watercolor palette by um, Mikador, and I think I'm going to add some bright, vibrant red. I don't know. I'm just going to bring some more color onto the page. So I guess when you are incorporating vintage ephemera. It really just depends how brave you are about altering the pieces and using the pieces because yes it can be it can feel a bit precious 
Um, and I can totally understand that because I'm the same way with using ephemera. I tend to just hold it because it feels way too precious to use. But otherwise it just sits there. So sometimes it's good to incorporate it into our art as well. So, yeah, so this page, I guess it might end up looking a little bit vintage at the end because I'm going to try and demonstrate um, a couple of different ways to use it. So I've already used it in the background. But if you if you didn't want it to be super vintage, you might not want to add any more ephemera after you use it in the background. You might just want to do that for one page. So that's what I'm going to try and um, do with this process. Just show a couple of different ways. And by all means, you do not have to use them all together in one page if you don't want to. So, so I'm not really sure what I'm doing here. <laughs> I'm just adding colour and I'm just trying to bring that vibrant colour into this page so that it's not all, so that I can bring that um, more modern look to it. So um, however you want to add colour, you can do that, it doesn't have to be this way. Now let me see, I think I'm going to start working with my photos so this one I don't really want to cut I think I'm going to keep that the way it is this one I might um, alter it I might actually cut around him so let me go ahead and do that so I just cut around him um, I'm just playing with altering the photo itself so that's why I did that I think I'm going to just pop them on this way. Yeah, I was originally going to put one on either side, but I don't want one to be hidden. I want them to both to be showing, unless I do it like this. I might do it like that. Okay, so now I think I'm going to show you another way you could incorporate ephemera. Again, this could be used on its own or or you could do what I'm doing and do all of these things together. So this is just a receipt. And I'm going to use this actually for my personal journaling. So because it's lined, I'm just going to write on it. Um, and that's going to be my, my journaling for this page. Yeah, if you like to incorporate journaling into your art journal page, journal on your ephemera. You can journal on the back sides. You can journal on postcards. You can journal on envelopes. Um, you could even journal inside trading cards if they didn't have anything inside them. You could definitely do that. That way you're not altering the actual image on the front, but you are still incorporating your own personal life and then using the ephemera. So if I was to do that with this card, if it was blank, I would journal and then I would most likely make a pocket and just tuck it in or something. So that's another way you could do it. I'm going to add some journaling to this and then I'm going to do some more on this page. added some journaling onto this receipt. I wasn't too fussy about the writing. I wanted to make it a little bit cursive and a little bit harder to read. Um, I'm probably actually just going to layer this behind something and if some of it gets covered that's fine. So that's another little idea for your art journals. If you want to incorporate your actual life in journaling but you, you don't want other people to read it or you want it to be hidden in your art, just hide it like add it as a layer and then it's still in the page but it's hidden so um, that's another way to do that so I think I'm going to just layer that and I think I'm going to start incorporating this paper onto the page as well so that it brings some more modern patterns so I'm going to go and cut this up a little bit and then I'm going to start adding some layering mm.
layers add something, even if they get hidden, it's still a part of the page. So just something to keep in mind. And I'm just going to glue down my journaling. So I liked the way that looked here. And then I think I'm going to just pop the, the photo on top. So do I want to make it so you can read it? I think I do because it's journaling kind of for my kids. So I'm going to add some, I'm going to add some washi. I'm choosing a bright color again so that this can help keep the page looking more modern. Even though I'm using vintage ephemera, so I'm going to actually make this a like a tip in so that you can open it up so that you can read that journaling, but it still has that layered look. Alrighty, so um, all I did was add some washi, add some more patterns, and now um, I'm going to try and demonstrate some other ways to add ephemera. So um, I've now got my son in the high chair. He's eating strawberries, but you may hear him calling out because he's a bit loud this one um, so now I'm gonna add just some more things so I'm gonna do uh, I think I'm gonna do like a little cluster of ephemera so if you have pieces of ephemera that you want to use I want to keep this one together because I like I just like that so let's say you have it can it doesn't have to be what I'm using obviously it could be it could be a ticket or it could be um, um, it could be a postcard it could be anything that you have that you want to use yeah. and I'm just gonna start layering it obviously your page is gonna be different to mine so say you have your art and then you want to add some of your ephemera just do maybe a cluster on one side so I'm going to use some of this I think I'm going to use this is just another bit of pattern instructions that I have I'm just gonna make like a tag out of it again use whatever ephemera you want to use so if you have doesn't matter what you have I think don't be afraid to if you're gonna, if you want to incorporate it, and you you have that desire to, don't be afraid to make changes to it so that it works because you want to make you want to make use of it. So I think I made this tag too big because I don't want to cover up the footprints unless I backed this. I feel like it's too thin on its own. A little cluster I decided to do it like a tip in again kind of with washi so that um, you could see I didn't want to cover everything up so it still has the layered effect like what I did over here but you can actually open it and interact and the good thing about doing stuff like this is you can hide journaling pine things like I did here so if I wanted to I could add more journaling here on, on a piece of thing so I've got ledger paper here for example journal stick it on there and then it's hidden and then behind here I could do journaling and then it's hidden so there um, that's just some more ideas I'm gonna add some more washi where this tipping joins to the page just because of, of the tears that are there so just to make it look a bit nicer so there is my page so far I think now I actually have some fabric these are scraps of fabric from my kids' clothes. So when I went through their clothes, there were some pieces of clothes that were really damaged or stained. And so I didn't um, bother passing them on to anyone 
or taking them to the second hand shop because they were, they were pretty ruined. So I used some of them and cut little quilt squares out to keep and then I kept some of the fabrics to use in my art journal. So I'm going to use these pieces of fabric as well. And I'm just going to go ahead and start gluing them. So I just added some fabric just to add some extra textures to the page. Um, I thought about actually using this one with the snaps and using it so that it could snap together but I didn't think this would stick very well because it's quite heavy. So I stapled one side of it on there and then I just put fabric down. So because these are actually pieces of fabric from clothing they've worn, to me it's got like a sentimental value. Um, to other people it might just look like scraps of fabric, but to me it's got that sentimental value. So now I think I'm going to add a bit of texture paste. I've got this little heart stencil I might incorporate somewhere. And go in with a pen and like try and bring in, um, just use my pen to, to bring all the pieces together even more. And just kind of blend it in. And then I'm probably going to finish up after that. I'll let you watch the rest of the video and just see how I finish off the page. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Also, just for a couple of different ideas in, on using ephemera, because I'm pretty happy with this page already, I'm not gonna add any more, but if you wanted to, a couple of other ideas I had was to make pockets with ephemera. So you could, you could use it as a pocket and tuck a photo or something inside you could tip in envelopes or letters into the middle into the middle of a page and that way you don't have to alter actually alter the letter too much but it's still on the page um i saw another cool idea somewhere where someone used a ticket i don't have one but i'm going to use this for example um and and folded it in half and made it a tab pull so like Say this was a photo you would just attach the ticket onto the top of a photo or your ephemera and then you can tuck that out of a pocket so there's so many different ways you can use it and i still have a couple more ideas so if you would like me to elaborate or do another page with ephemera just let me know i would be happy to do it because i had a lot of fun doing this page so anyway i'm going to go ahead and finish up and thank you guys so much for watching. Bye!
So a couple of things to keep in mind, you may have vintage photos that you want to use so you can incorporate them the same way I've used my own photographs. Um, make tags or cards or things out of ephemera as well. Do clusters on pages and use them in backgrounds. You can also use them for journaling. You can use them to make pockets, tuck spots, or you can just simply tuck them in to somewhere on your page or you can tip them into somewhere on your page. So those are some of my top ideas for incorporating vintage ephemera. I hope that it was helpful and that I I helped answer your question. If I didn't, please leave me a comment and I can try and elaborate further or come up with some more ideas for you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye bye!